Hello everyone, it's me, Kirk Maston, and today we are doing a wonderful interview with my friend Daryl Love. He is in studio today, and he was actually out shooting uh, a shoot earlier today, right? In yeah. Seattle? Yes, I was. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about that shoot? Uh, yes. Uh, I visit Seattle pretty often now. Uh, big fan of the city. I'm from Colorado. Uh, a lot of people think it's similar, but it's not. Uh, the shoot we did today was with a model local to the region. Her name's Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Hill, and she does styling, modeling, and photography. Uh, so she's a triple threat, as I call her. Nice. Um, and we did a studio location down in, I believe, the Soto International District. There's a natural light studio there where we did more of a heavy editorial kind of fashion shoot. Oh, cool. Uh, where she brought a bunch of looks. Uh, we did some white seamless, um, some near the windows. They had these really tall, beautiful windows. Remind me of like New York City. Um, and it was great. We rented the studio for two, two hours, and I wish we did three because nice. before you knew it, we had to scurry out of there. But yeah, it was great. And she's, she's amazing. Yeah. So really excited to see those images especially with all the different film stocks, black and white, color, pushed, uh, even the digital rolls were looking really great. Good, good, yeah, <laughs> so, awesome. I'm so, excited. So Daryl was shooting a shoot uh, that's part of a, a test shoot for new film presets and styles that will be coming out sometime over this year. And we can't, we can't disclose what film stocks we were shooting Although one of those rolls of film was $30 or $50, $50, and we had to import it from Japan. It was very hard to find, and it's a really cool film. Yeah. So we'll let, we'll let all of you sp speculate on what <laughs> that really rare but still in production film is and why we are messing around with it. But mm -hmm. yeah, but that's really cool. I'm, I'm glad that the shoot went well. Mm -hmm. um, and Sodo, Sodo is, means South Downtown. It's a part of Seattle where it's kind of industrial and it's yeah. changing and there's a lot of artists down there. So it's a really cool, cool area. Yeah, it was, it's nice because every time I come up here, I'm usually in this area, like Ballard, Fremont, uh, Piney Ridge. Is that how you say it? Finney Ridge. Finney Ridge. Yeah. There's an H in there. So um, it's nice to go down there and shoot because I've kind of steered away from it, mostly the traffic. And then I like the small neighborhoods around this area so yeah and going down there too it's just a lot of character and old school just buildings and i still have yet to do one of those underground tours that everyone keeps oh, telling about you gotta tunnels. do that yeah yeah so uh but yeah we had a great time and um really excited about how that turned out because it's the main reason i came out was to do that and it went well so the rest is smooth sailing okay so moving on um to the reason we are here, or part of the reason we're here is, uh, can you tell us about Colorado and your journey as a photographer there? Like, how did that all work out? Yeah, so uh, I live in Fort Collins. It's a, about an hour north of Denver, uh, just below the B Wyoming border. I've been there going on eight years. Uh, I moved there from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, just to leave Tennessee, start a new chapter. Um, and shortly after moving to Colorado, I got into photography as a hobby. Uh, then, as my passion grew for the art form, my mother and grandmother gave me a film camera, my uncle's old Hasselblad, oh, and nice. that's what shot me into the, where I am today, because uh, something snapped and I <laughs> had to learn everything about it. Uh, and then, yeah. obviously, if you build it, they will come. Uh, I just kept taking photos, always with the camera. I was kind of known as the guy around town with the camera. Yeah. Uh, you were the photographer. Yeah. The photographer friend. Yeah, the photographer yeah. friend. Yeah. Um, and Fort Collins is more of a small town. Uh, a lot of people out here would compare it to Bellingham, mm -hmm. um, where it's, there's a university that I'd say make up maybe – fifth or sixth of the population when it's in session. Uh -huh. um, and then the rest is locals who can't leave, graduated, never left, yeah. or, you know, was around before the big boom. Um, so it's a small town, and in a place like that, word of mouth 
is powerful, um, yeah. especially in like the downtown areas. And as a photographer in that area, it's it's all about relations, um, where you make a good impression or build a good foundation as a not only a creative or business person. Mm-hmm. Word travels pretty fast, um, so in that space and that's how I kind of grew as the photographer I am today was not only being that photographer that always had the camera the friend that was a photographer taking photos just for fun yeah and then people were like hey you're actually kind of good at this you want to pay you now and and what has happened is most of my clients in that area have come from relations I've built throughout the years of just being an artist And then others as word of mouth. Yeah. Um, Because I feel in a space like that, when you're in a kind of a tight knit community, a lot of people, they take uh, other people's advice or opinions or recommendations more seriously than what they can find on the internet. Yeah. Uh, Because they'd rather support local artists or local vendors, local businesses more so than you know, hiring someone from say Denver to come up and do things. Um, and with that being said, a lot of people in that space kind of also try and get, you know, the homie hookup or, you know, friend discount, but yeah. How do you handle that? Um, discount right now, just recently I've started, just stopped doing that all completely. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no discounts. Uh, so, so if I came to you and I said, Daryl, we've been friends forever. I'm getting engaged. You're an awesome photographer. Do you think maybe you could help me out? I would say I can help you out by lending you my services. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is my rate. Um, And one of my best friends, he taught me how to convey the worth in my photography. Um, So it's easy for a friend to come up and say, hey, give me a homie hookup, you know, stuff like that. But then if you spell out to them about why your price is what it is, and you can pinpoint not only the cost of each hour and retouching and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. most of them can appreciate that. And surprisingly, most of them will pay it, um, especially if you're forward and honest with them about why you charge what you charge. Um, And that's a hard lesson to, to learn because in the beginning, if you're just throwing out handouts everywhere, you get that reputation as being um, like the cheap the photographer, cheap or the, the photographer that will fold yeah and give you a deal or say so and so told me to hit you up about this and stuff like that or i heard you charge this much from this person yeah. um so that's a one thing that i've had to like definitely backtrack on mm-hmm. and start realizing that obviously when i first started I was just doing it for fun and it was nice because it was supplementing my income. It was never intentionally going to be my full-time thing. Yeah. But now that it is, I have to backtrack and make sure that I'm firm and my foundation is built upon now that this is my full-time thing. Mm-hmm. This is what I charge and why I charge it. And and was there a point where you figured out how much you need to make per hour or per per shoot yes um luckily the cost of living in fort collins is cheaper than say denver or big city like seattle um i could commute everywhere by bike uh it's that Mm -hmm. kind of town um but with that being said uh i have to look into the cost of everything i use to run a business Mm -hmm. just everything's running off subscription based services now so i have almost the same price in rent is the same price in just running Lightroom and Pixie Set and all these other things that I use. So uh, it's mostly just adding all that kind of things up. And Mm -hmm. then with that being said, also comes along planning for the future. Uh, I don't want to rent my whole life. I might not stay in Fort Collins my whole life. And then as I'm starting to try to branch out of Fort Collins in terms of clients and business, I got to realize it's a competitive world out there and got to have my prices reflect traveling somewhere else or doing do you, stuff like that. Do you think realizing how much you need to make, and, and I'm, I'm assuming it's probably going to be more than you thought, <laughs> like as you learn, uh, did you find that that was something that turned customers away or did it have any negative impact on your business? At first it did um, because obviously you want to make money. Um, yeah. 
but like I said earlier, when I had to up my rates and not give discounts and stuff like that and tell people straight up, especially friends, that these are my rates now and this is it, most will want to support you. Um, and the people that turned me away, it wasn't anything personal. You know, they, they just yeah. couldn't afford it. It was outside of their budget. Yeah. But then comes that foundation you're building around, this is my rates and people in that kind of community refer to you as, okay, he's now in a higher tier or high market, or if someone's like, this is our budget, we know the guy in that budget. Yeah. Um, instead of the low budget, you might be in the middle or the high end budget now. Yeah. And you, and it's pretty funny when you start confidently using those rates and stuff like that, people will recommend you or you kind of gravitate towards that market. Yeah. Um, and when you come with that, people start referring you or other people, it seems to almost attract people that you want when you do that. Because if yeah. you, I learned shooting like very small things or very cheap rates and stuff like that. You know, the clients were just here and there and stuff like that. But now that I've upped them, it's a little bit more professional almost. Um, there's just a lot the more entire process, the entire the, process, the type of the, person you work with, yeah, and how, uh, how they respect your art, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's teaching me a lot about running a business too. When you start entering that higher end market, it's 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 much more than just you know what it used to be, where it was kind of run and gun situation. Yeah, it's a lot of preparing, a lot of preparation, and uh, it's it's a big. I, f I found in the in our community, it's a big fear for a lot of people to actually ask for what they want, mm -hmm. like, you know, charge what they want, and that kind of the first thing people turn to in a way to be a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer in a town is to do this kind of a race to the bottom of, like, how cheap can I do it? I'm going to, you know, I'm less expensive, so hire me, or I will give you more things for the same price. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be kind of, like, where people gravitate to as, like, a first strategy yeah but ultimately it's not sustainable no right? it's not sustainable and i remember listening to a photographer say how he'd rather get one ten thousand dollar job instead of ten one thousand dollar jobs and he like broke it down why mm -hmm. and when you do stuff like that it can burn you out um very easily and also say something happens to your equipment on a shoot like that or uh, an emergency happens if you're doing a bunch of little things like that it's hard to you're treading water pretty much you're not swimming yeah. you're just basically floating just trying to get by uh, and I've been there I, it took me a long it's, time to seems to be natural for everyone to start yeah in that um, situation and it, it was a it was a hard pill to swallow it actually had another photographer come up to me and told me I kind of undercut him drastically on a client <laughs> yeah, that he yeah. was bidding on and at the time, I honestly didn't know what the industry rate was. And it was a, a lesson to me because I talked to him about it. And he, he kind of helped me, but he definitely was like, you really can't do that sustainably because yeah. uh, it, it ruins the whole market, not just my market or my business, but everyone kind of, it shifts the weight around the whole thing. So, yeah. And it was, yeah, it was definitely hard and it's, when people start off that way, you're going to eventually have to realize not only when you want to charge more, it's going to be kind of taking a bunch of back steps to do that. Yeah. But if you set yourself up in the future, and that doesn't mean you start off charging four grand a wedding on your first year full time. No. Um, but you know, and you can respectfully up them in fair amount of time i've known people raise rates in nine months maybe every year you know stuff like that but so kind of build like a foundation mm -hmm. and then try to jump up that ladder yeah right like as soon as you can and that's and then another thing is too like there's certain clients that i get it you want to charge cheap so they can hire you and hopefully it leads to more work not only with them or bigger clients because that's actually what i did to get one of my main clients and one of my favorite people I've worked with, it was mm -hmm. a company called Topo Designs. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. you're wearing one of their one shirts. of their shirts. Uh, I met the owner in a coffee shop. 
gave him a business card and then became an ambassador. Everyone loves to use that word these days. Mm -hmm. Where you give them photos, they give you product or some exposure, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, but then it turned into a full-time position with them on salary, with benefits and all that stuff. Um, and what I had to do was learn how to take from what it used to be like a running gun, they just give me a shirt and I go take photos of it too. Yeah. How do I professionally convey to them that let me do this full time for you, how much this will cost, break it down, show them what it's worth, instead of you know just like, hey, I just wanna do this full time, pay me this much. Yeah. Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions, especially to the more professional photographers in the industry. Cause networking was a big thing in Fort Collins for me, meeting up with all the photographers and videographers and other artists, because when you're starting off at a smaller market, uh, with like you're entering it, obviously your prices are lower. If you network with other photographers and they get, you know, inquiries and they're like, we're out of your budget, but I know someone who's in your budget. That's a good way to start. Yeah. Um, a referral from another a, photographer. A referral. A lot of, yeah. I've gotten a lot of work through that, um, yeah. starting off where I was the younger guy trying to make a name for myself. So they were like, this guy will shoot your family or this guy will do that. Mm -hmm. And then nine times out of 10, they want to see you grow as well. Um, the yeah. other photographers. And then once you find your niche, uh, whether it's weddings, portraits, headshots, events, uh, once you dial that in, you become the premier guy for that. And nine times out of 10, they will refer you for that specifically, even if you're in their same price tier, because that's what you do. You're known for it. You're not, yeah. you're not, you, 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 you're not a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. You're the go-to person yeah. for a certain type of thing. And that, that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, there was a saying, a really great saying, I don't know who said it, but it was like the first half of your life, you work to make a name for yourself. And the second half of your life, your name works for you. Oh, that's a good one. So, so you become like the, yeah, you're Daryl Love and you're known for... I think that was Michael Scott. Is that Michael Scott? Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but, but uh, yeah, that's, that's really powerful. I, I found in my career, the one kind of differentiating thing for me between amateurs and real professionals was the number of things they shot. Like mm -hmm. it gets narrower as you go on. Mm -hmm. Like in the beginning, I can I can tell a a beginner's website because they've got pets, sports, maternity, wedding, commercial, architecture, mm -hmm. plant photography, whatever. Yeah. And then and then you get you get you know fifteen years down the line and it's like ten images all really yeah. Good. Like I'm a commercial photographer, but not only not only is that only what I do, I only shoot in the outdoor space and only in you know this type of photography mm -hmm. like really specialized and you become the go-to person yeah so so i think like like working for topo that's that's huge and that that came from a chance meeting in a cafe yeah uh, i was because fort collins is especially the downtown area is pretty small met him in a cafe and he was decked out in topo and i was like hey man tell. love that brand tell me more about it He's like, oh, I'm the owner. And we talked, gave him a business card, and um, literally I just followed up and kind of annoyed them until they That's let me way shoot for it. them. Yeah, um, stay on the radar all the time. Just going into the store, emailing them to the point they were like, all right, we get it. You want to work for us, we'll do it. Um, because they never said no. So I always, it was an open-ended opportunity. So until they said no, I just kept asking. Um, and then it was a couple years of ambassador work and some paid actually shoots yeah. um, for fall and spring lines. And then they needed an in-house person because their line grew the and guy. I was right there ready. And it was a great opportunity because I shot a lot of stuff I had actually no not much experience doing and it was product photography um shooting in studio and outside for clothing backpacks and stuff like that and with that i did it for 18 months uh 20 months it made me realize this isn't what i want to do uh, sure so i left and now do 
professional freelance photography. Uh, and I tell people all the time that I'm glad I did it because now I know down the road that's not what I want to do for the rest of my life. Or that's sure. not what I want my name to be known as, is a product photographer. Yes. Um, you, you had to try it to know. Yeah. yeah. And I, like you were saying, amateur photographers, they have everything on their website. I tell people all the time, try it all because it's the best way to eliminate what you don't want to do. That's true. Like, yeah. like fail fast, mm -hmm. like in the beginning. Yeah. Like, try everything. I, I went through the same phase mm -hmm. um, a long time ago. I was living in Flagstaff, Arizona, and nice. I did like rock climbing, like a, a very poor attempt at boudoir because another <laughs> friend wanted to do that. Oh, that was awkward for me. Um, <laughs> A little bit of product photography for a mountain bike company. Uh, my first like few weddings, and I tried, and I worked at a newspaper, and I slowly kind of like whittled it down to, what do I feel comfortable doing? What do I enjoy? Or like mm -hmm. feel like I'm operating at 100 mm -hmm. percent? And uh, yeah, it certainly wasn't a lot of those things. But but you had to get through them quickly to know. Yeah, it's like trying a lot of different food, and then and like I like Thai food, but I'm not a huge fan of whatever something mm -hmm. else so yeah and it's yeah. it's nice to know what you want to do and i feel like that gives you more confidence and not only raising your rates and stuff like that but your business as a whole because if you know what you want to do and you do it well uh not only do people see it and respect it uh yeah. you take yourself just more seriously mm -hmm. uh when it comes to the art form in general and it's fun because once you find kind of that what you want to do, you have this purpose and it's no longer just trying everything just to try it. Uh, yeah. You find ways to take what you love doing and pushing the limits on what you thought it was. Uh, whether it's portraits or events or weddings, you find a way to like add your own character and voice into it. Um, yeah. You go from being kind of a technician to actually like having something to say, mm -hmm. like yeah, a path and it's, for your work. And that's when I feel photographers really thrive is when you can start seeing their own style or personality come into the photos. Um, and that's what I respect photographers too is when I can see some of their work and know it's them before I even see who the photo was. So without any name or anything mm -hmm. on it, you could see just like you could do a Google image search, mm -hmm. step back and be like, I know exactly who that is. Exactly. Like their style and their voice is consistent. And it's whether they edit the same or the way they shoot. Um, like Zami, he was here not too long ago. And yes, his wide angle work is it's awesome. second to none in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, um, so, and I see his stuff pop, come across my Facebook feed often. And I'm a big fan of his stuff. And it's just, yeah, it's stuff like that that makes me like really appreciate it. Yeah. Would I go try and do that? Probably not, because it's not, I'm starting to realize it's, it's not, not me. It's not your journey, yeah. it's not your path. Mm -hmm. You have your own path, yeah. So it's, and that's why I like Fort Collins too, is because there's so many different businesses and so many different things that you can do, and it's all taught me and brought me to where I am. So one thing that's really interesting about you is you, you don't have an Instagram, right? I do not have an Instagram, it's been, six months without it and, uh, and because you don't get work that way no i i've never used it as a, a business tool never made it a business page or anything like that it was all just personal work on there um experimenting and yeah um uh, and it was it was funny because i didn't post that often either and honestly it was mostly just a way to connect with other film photographers in the area that's what sure, it was yeah. and other artists that's the best resource for it in my opinion is connecting with other other like artists. artists yeah so can you give us an example of like so you you put a probably a certain amount of time in like getting more clients but it sounds like you do it at a very social one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one level yeah so one benefit i had was working in the service industry as a barista for a while uh, oh, so yeah. I met a lot of people lot through of that. People. Um, but it was definitely owning up to telling people I'm a photographer and being confident about it. Mm -hmm. So going places, meeting people, keeping cards on me. And then if people ask me what I do, I didn't tell them I was a barista. I tell them I'm a photographer. Yeah. Um, 
And then that's when people started getting the idea that like if people was like, I need a photographer, my name would pop up in the conversation. Um, so it was a lot of groundwork networking, just uh, going to social events, going to places all the time. I always had my camera with me. It was you do. Almost, you, you, I mean, this is one of the only times I've seen you without a camera, like strapped around. On you. Yeah. I, I would love to have my house fly with me, but yeah. it. Um, but yeah, it was basically that um, kind of work that I was doing mostly was just going places all the time owning up to that and telling people I'm a photographer and then that way it kind of doesn't work for you and there was a lot of cold emailing too like with Topo um, finding out who the business owner was like walking into the business I'm like hey I'd love to work with you guys mm -hmm. and there was a lot of small boutiques in the town that I did a lot of work for that was commercial work product work commercial work uh, clothing stores editorial work there was a couple of magazines so would, would you walk into a store and be like Hey, I really love your products. I'm a it photographer. Was, I've done some work for Topo. So, for instance, there was a store. This was even before Topo. Um, it was a women's boutique. Uh, the owner, she's from California. They had a coffee shop. They just opened a brand new clothing store. Mm -hmm. And they, they didn't have any social network presence or anything. Um, and I could tell immediately like, when they started their Instagram and Facebook page, it was photos, they just kept reposting from brands they were taking So you, you could see they were struggling. They could see they were struggling and they had no idea what they were gonna do with uh, moving forward. So I went straight into their store um, and told them I was a photographer, mm -hmm. wanted to work with them, and this is what I want to do. And I gave them kind of like a clear idea of, I wanna do three shoots with you guys, I got a shoot like this I've always wanted to do, I have a shoot like this. This girl, I know she does styling, so, because I don't know girls' clothing, she can help me, blah, blah, blah. And, and I found that having a clear direction of what you want to do with these companies is, yeah. is all the difference. Because they're, they're, they're looking to advertise, mm -hmm. but they've got so much going on for them to put together an idea for advertising or marketing. Mm -hmm. Like for you to come in as a photographer and be like, I see you need images, I have these ideas, I've already structured it for you. Just sign sign here and we're good to go. Yeah. We're like, let's let's do this. Yeah. And that, that's a big thing for a company. A big thing. And it's it takes a lot of work off their plate if you come to them with the plan. Yes. You don't say, hey, I'm a photographer in the network. I'd love to work with you guys and leave it at that. If you come in with, I'd love to work with you. I got a plan. All you need to do is say yes. The rest is done. That's, that's a great, that's like a really good template for people mm -hmm. to follow, yeah. like to, to come in with that plan. And that also puts you in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. So you're already kind of establishing how you want to work, your level of, you know, professionalism, maybe roughly what you want to get paid, what mm -hmm. will be delivered. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, and that's good. That's and great. it's fun because once you get to that point where you're just going in and also face to face was a big thing. Mm -hmm. in Fort Collins, uh, meeting people, talking to them. And sometimes it was not even talking about photography in general. It was just meeting them, mm -hmm. business owners and stuff like that, because there's a lot of business associations and stuff like that. But just going in a couple times, just befriending them, and then coming to them with an idea was they would already say yes. They, they know you. And they they know trust you. you trust they you. like working with you already. And you have a plan. Mm -hmm. The plan is the big thing because especially when you give them a plan and they say yes, you already have your name attached to the plan. They're not setting you up to do something you don't want to do or you, yeah. you didn't envision because it's fun to like say you want to work with REI and you're like, I want to do one of those crazy outdoor shoots in Patagonia. Uh, and you just tell them you want to work with them. If they send you to... The studio and do some stuff and you're like no i want to do the fun stuff yeah uh, you have to come and not only make yourself known and tell them that that's what you want to do and they might say no they might say unfortunately we're not looking to fill that bucket right now right now right now yeah. um but we have you in mind and there's a photographer i know her name's allison vecnini she's out of boulder probably one of my favorite people ever mm -hmm. and an amazing photographer she does a lot of work for rei and I asked her once, like, how did you start doing work for REI to begin with? 
And she said she cold emailed them a couple times and they just like responded with what seemed like an automated message. But then when they needed to fill that bucket, they pulled her back up and she was available. And then that's how it came about. Um, so if someone says no, that doesn't mean hmm. it's no forever. <clears throat> uh, down the road, they might revisit it. And that's another thing too with photographers. If you like raise your price and they say, you're out of our budget right now. That right doesn't now. Right now. Yeah. Like we can't afford that right now or right now is not a good time for this project. Uh, down the road, if you establish yourself with not only that budget, but not only that plan, when the time comes, they'll reach back out and be like, hey, we can afford you now or we want to do that idea X, Y, and Z. And it's nice to, you know, have that. So the worst they can say is no, but that doesn't mean it's a closed door. Cool. Unless you burn the bridge but <laughs> no that's good i <clears throat> i love that persistence and uh just to kind of wrap things up because i think we're probably at our over our time uh, <laughs> but it's been really good is like you've given us like an entirely new approach to making business for yourself mm -hmm. i find that a lot of people spend a lot of time building up and investing in social networks like blogging, posting photos on Instagram, posting stuff on Facebook, working on SEO, all this stuff. And you're just like doing an end run around all of that and just going right to the person that's hiring mm -hmm. and just going like, I'm your guy. You like me. I'm a good photographer. I am a photographer. I'm a pro. Here's our plan. And they're saying yes. Yeah. Whereas like you could spend all this time <clears throat> investing in social media <clears throat> hoping for one of those people to reach out to you and mm -hmm. say, oh, please, Daryl, like, come work for us. Yeah. You're going right to the source. So I think that's really unique. Yeah, I like it that way because I work with the clients I want to work with. And it seems to me more personal because it's, uh, it's a two-way street. It's not uh, mm -hmm. people reaching out to social media and stuff like that. And it also helps me uh, kind of really give character to what I shoot and what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But with that being said is don't knock social media and SEO and stuff like that. It's, I feel like if I could, I do it all. Sure. <laughs> There's only so much time in the day. There's only so much time in the day. And, uh, and honestly, it's one of the things I want to do this year is get really into website and SEO and stuff like that, uh, to start attracting clients outside of my original network. Um, because you got to grow. Um, yeah. And you, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's been fun growing in Colorado and it's nice to take my work to other places. Um, Seattle, New York, and I was in New Mexico doing some stuff last month and that was fun too. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just when you're starting off, it's the best place to start is home you know, in your backyard, because mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. Everyone thinks you have to move to a big city to make it. You can start right where you are. You don't have to relocate or go for the big dogs first. Yeah, you don't have to move to New York or LA. Mm -hmm. You can just do it where you are. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Cool, man. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming in. and Of course. I'll be back before you know it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, we can do a round you. two uh, this summer when I come back. All right. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, I hope that was very helpful for our community. And um, yeah, I think there isn't enough discussion about breaking into commercial work or going outside of what everybody's doing, which is just social media approaches. So mm -hmm. I think that was super valuable and, and great. So thank you so much of for course. coming in. It was my pleasure. <laughs>